All right, I'm gonna throw this out there right away. This video is not going to be short. <laughs> we have We've got a couple of gloves sitting here. We have a couple of gloves, and you know, again, it kind of makes me think back to the boot video. Uh, you, in order to have a, a great day, you have to be warm and comfortable. And a good boot will make you happy, and a great selection of gloves. But this is kind of like the base layers. You look at all this and it's like kind of overwhelming. We'll try to fix that for you. Exactly. And so I have been very vocal in saying that I carry a lot of gloves um, because it really depends what I'm doing on the day. Um, for example, it could be a cold January day, but a dude wrecks an A-arm, Kyle, and I can't, I want something that is easy to work on stuff. So that's when I, I'll grab my pair of inversions, right? So I can work on the sled and still feel the, the nuts and bolts and, and all of that stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do is, uh, Dustin from Climb here, I'm gonna have you help me kind of walk through all of this. I'm gonna tell you guys, I literally have ridden in every single one of these gloves and I have found a formula that I love um, and I have found a glove and it has taken many years to be, to, to be like this. I used to carry like 82 pairs of inversions. Um, but now with the, the new inversion GTX, so basically a lightweight Gore-Tex glove, man, 80% of the day I'm, I'm rocking that glove. Um, and I, and I love it. So we'll, uh, we'll just jump through here. We'll try not to bore you guys with a ton of details, but again, you know, our goal here is, is to give you guys some information. So when you go to the snow shows or you go into your dealer and you have an idea of what glove is going to suit you. Um, and it's not glove. There's not one glove that is going to take care of all the use demands of oh. snowmobiling from November to May. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So let's start with the inversion. So, so I think, and before we go into this, I think there's a couple things that are important to understand. First off, um, there's kind of some categories here, um, insulated, non-insulated, long, short, um, Gore-Tex, non-Gore-Tex, yeah. right? So depending on what you're doing will depend on which category you fit in. So we'll kind of try to make it easier to understand from that way. But, but what a lot of people don't understand is there's a lot of technology that's changed in gloves just in the last five years. You would look at a glove and you're like, well, it's a pair of gloves. Like you see them together and it's no big deal, but that's far from the truth now. Yeah. There's so many things we can do with moisture and insulation and bonding so that they don't slip around and you know materials and, and silicones and things that we've come a long way with grip and comfort and warmth well and we all remember when your hand used to get a little clammy and you would pull your hand out of the glove the liner stick, would come right, out i yeah. mean you know i'm glad you said that um and it's been a few years since i've been to the gore-tex gore-tex facility but a lot of emphasis was being made back then and it's funny like i look at the gloves we have now and that was like five years ago and those are here now right you know yeah. and and to, to talk about that so we have a couple things that we we really need to emphasize one is gore-tex and that's something that we've kind of sucked at with talking about everything else. We haven't really talked about why it's important and how it works. And why Climb is the only manufacturer in the snowmobile world that has the, the rights to Gore-Tex. Yeah. And so um, now to implement it in a glove. And Gore-Tex isn't just wa a waterproof company. They have, they're, they have a huge company. Huge company. Medical devices, sure. shielding space like and, they do all kinds of stuff and and we have some new features called you know, like gore grip and i'm gonna have you explain gore grip yep. and and how that works well let's talk about that right now so gore grip why is gore grip important so you touched on how annoying it is to have that liner pull out with your hand when you're trying to pull the glove out right that sacrifices grip because it's sliding around in there mm -hmm. when you're trying to hold the bars but then it's also kind of cumbersome to use so gore grip there's different types of gore grip but essentially what it is is we're taking the inner liner the Gore-Tex membrane, the waterproof membrane, and then the outer shell, and we're bonding them together. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, but it's really hard because in order to build a glove that's waterproof, there can't be any seams. Oh. So it's gotta be a bag, and then they gotta build it inside out, and then they gotta fold it, and they've gotta glue it, and it, it, it takes some really specialty equipment, and it's difficult to do. So Gore-Grip has been, we've been working on this for 
15 years almost wow. to get the right recipe and the technology developed so we can build these gloves and be waterproof, 100% waterproof. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these gloves, you're, we'll talk about which ones are gore grip, but just understand that if what you're really focused on is gripping the bars, gore grip is the key. Like that's the big deal, right? Yeah. So let's start off non-insulated. Uh, inversion gloves, they're a Gore-Tex wind stopper material. They block the wind, they're lightweight. A lot of hill climb guys race in these. Yep. Um, warm days, they're nice. They have excellent grip. They've got silicone on the palms. Um, they're lightweight. Uh, they're actually fairly warm. Yep. Um, if you can, you know, if, as long as you keep them dry. They do repel moisture, but they're not seam sealed, so they're not waterproof. This is like really, um, that late February through the rest of the season, this is my go-to glove. And what's nice about it is with the wind stopper, you're right. It is a warm glove. Uh, you can, you can wear it on really cold days. And from, from a feel standpoint, there's nothing that gives you the control on the handlebars like that. Cause glove. they're, they're only one layer. Yeah. You're not having to fill through different sure. layers. So, yep. um, I have a set of these in my pickup. Yeah. for hooking the trailer up. I have a set of these in my garage, you know, when I'm walking out to the shed in the middle of winter, like I, I kind of have these everywhere yeah. in, because they're just handy to have, right? I'll mechanic in them sometimes. So yeah. agree. they're nice. Uh, moving up the ladder, we want a thin glove, but we want it to be waterproof. Uh, we can I call with... this the unicorn glove right here. This was like the holy grail we were going for. I mean, uh -huh. we spent a lot of years working on the recipe to get these gloves to work the way we wanted them to. So we've got the inversion, GTX, GTX stands for Gore-Tex, so waterproof. And then we have the spool and they're very similar gloves. They're a non-insulated Gore grip glove. So they're a very thin glove, maximum grip with no insulation. Um, and the difference is a synthetic palm versus a leather palm. Some people like the leather feel, mm -hmm. some people like the synthetic feel. So you kind of have your choice of which one's gonna work best for you, right? Yep. Um, so those are our, again, a warmer day glove. Um, yeah. It's on really cold days, that's not gonna, Going to be warm yeah and and again everyone's perception of what a cold day is I, I mean i so i still have the recipe when i'm riding in most of the time i will go with a heavier glove and once i get to my riding destination it's the inversion gtx it's it, a lightweight glove with good feel i know we didn't plan on talking about this but but there's something you said something really important there it's easy to keep yourself warm and, and, and like, if you get cold, it's hard to get warm yep. again. Like you want to prevent it because if you start out with cold hands and trying to get them to warm back up it and then get tough. it, it's Just really, like cold really feet. tough. Yep. So you're yep. better off to start with those warm gloves, even if you don't know if you're going to need them and keep your hands warm. And then if you get too warm, you can always change them out. That's not that yeah. big of a deal, but it's harder to go the other way. Well, and so that brings us to our next glove in the line. Yes. Which is, this is another this is heated, best, best of both worlds. This is the heated uh, inversion GTX. So this is a waterproof, very thin gore grip glove with a button that you have three different power levels, three different heat settings and an interchangeable battery that you can, um, you can take them out and charge them. And here's the cool thing. I've been wearing these for two years. Um, you can have a spare set of batteries in your pocket. And if you run out of battery in the day, you just hurry up and pop out your other ones that are charged and you plug it in, you, you've yeah. got, you're ready to go. And yeah. they actually last quite a while. The heat, the high heat setting is hour, hour and a half, but the low heat setting is like, I mean, I think I've gone as much as eight hours wow. on the low heat setting. So this is kind of a, it's almost a do all glove. Like if it's really it's cold, really close, you can turn yep. that heat on. The heat's on the back of the hands, not on the palm. Um, and then you can turn the heat off if it gets warmer. You don't have to change the glove. Here's what I will say. And this actually kind of goes hand in hand with all the gloves, but something that initially I was so excited when Climb came to me and said, we've got this lightweight Gore-Tex glove. It's going to be the perfect glove for you. This is what you've been asking for. And they handed it to me. I put my hand in it and I'm like, it was a little crunchy. And I'm like, oh man, these, and literally I can, I can ride in it one day and it softens up and, 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 and has, so it has to break in. And so, yeah. you know, keep that in mind. Um, when when you're trying the gloves on it at the dealer um, All, most of them too well you Anything will has got you, a leather especially exactly yeah. you will feel that you have to get a ride or two in and then those gloves really just come form-fitted to your hand and like 
my broken pair of Inversion GTXs, you'd have to rip those out of my hand to, to take them away from me. I Are love they like them. your broken pair of Togedis? We'll Tell me, I want to know about these. We'll, We'll talk about these, but these are these gloves are probably eight years old, and these are still my go-to um, when I've had to work on a sled and it's like like hours, right? <laughs> and I'm cold, and I put my hands in these, and they are magic. They get me back to where I need to be, and I don't ride with them very often. I'll take them back off and go back to my other glove. But you know, you talk about how do you get back to good, like to warm. You know, this glove for me, gosh, dang, these things stink. Uh, <laughs> they've been around the block for a while. This but isn't eight years of average man writing. Dude, either. look this at this. eight years of Chris Brandt writing. I mean, these things are torn. I got a, <laughs> I got ripped off a tree one time. I got burnt because uh, we were having to fix a bogey wheel. And so we had a fire and we were straightening the bogey wheel. Uh, these have seen everything. And literally, again, they just uh, keep me warm. So When I saw those, I was like, we have to have those out here. Yeah. All right, moving up the ladder, we've got uh, Tried and True Power Cross. We've had three or four revisions of these over the last 10 or 15 years. This is one of our original first glove, the Power Cross glove. It hasn't really needed any fixing. Yeah. Like, we'll change the styling a little bit. We've got a leather palm, you know, the Velcro cuff. It's a shorter glove. But really, this glove has just kind of been the go-to glove for most people. A little bit of insulation on the back of the hand. Gore grip, nothing on the palm, so you have a really good grip. It kind of does everything well. Yeah. Um, this is uh, probably one of the most popular gloves for our guides here is, is that glove. Uh, I'll, you know, you're in, it's Gore-Tex, so it's waterproof. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the snow a bunch, digging skis and doing all that stuff, that, I know that's Kyle's favorite. Andrew wears it from time to time. Andrew really likes the inversion gloves. Um, but, you know, that glove and now, and that you also have a version with a longer cuff. Yeah. I like the longer cuff personally. Um, again, the only time I'm going to be wearing that glove for me personally is when it's a cold day. And if it's a cold day, I don't want the short cuff. I want, I like sure. the long cuff. So I get a little I, better I, wind protection. I liked that. Uh, seeing that option there. Yeah. So that's just, this has just been a lot of people's go-to glove for a long time and we, we we it's it's been our highest so one of our highest selling gloves in the spring it'll get a little warm because the insulation on the back yeah. of the hand mm -hmm. um, and i'm you know i'm using the spool or the inversion gtx okay uh and then we have a heated version of the same glove just like we talked about with the inversion gtx heated we've got the power cross heated same uh heating elements same principle so we won't spend a lot of time with that next up is a new glove called the guide glove and this is um this was a request from guys like you and dan adams guys who spend a ton of time on the snow they want something super soft super supple a little bit of insulation but a really uh, a high-end premium fill mm -hmm. um it's got the durability of the stuff we've had here but just kind of that next level and so this is all really nice leather back of palm and front yep um, well, and what this glove is going to do, it will take a little bit of time, but one of the reasons, again, we go back to my go-to, this leather, when it's broke in, is so limber and easy to move. And that's something with a high grade leather, that's what you will get. And so I'm excited to uh, put these through the paces. And as they'll well. break in a little bit. I noticed on the ones I was, the prototypes I was wearing last year, you know, they'll start and they kind of feel like that a little bulky. I think we call it a rodeo leather, mm -hmm. um, but then they just get soft and they're just, they're super comfortable. One thing I haven't touched on with some of these other gloves is you'll notice we've got this squeegee yeah. right here on the finger for your goggles. And if you've ever ridden in ice, like sleet ice, these are a must. I use the squeegee a ton. Uh, it's, I, I know it's on my left index finger and I know I can just go like that because you don't want to smear. You want to scrape the snow and water uh, and ice off of your garden. And even scraping, like, that sounds rough, right? But I mean, in some instances, that's literally what you're doing, but you're just squeegeeing that moisture off yeah. of the lens. Yeah, and there's, you'll notice that most of these gloves have them any any of the Gore-Tex gloves have the squeegee on the finger um, that's we try to put that across the line yep next this is kind of another one of those go-to's uh, when we talk about like you know what's what's in my bag literally we've covered most of them I have a set of, I have two pairs of inversions my inversion GTX I then I actually do have one of those as well and then this is my go home glove uh, is the Togedi yeah and this is the newer version of what you got here. And the cool feature that, that this is another one of our 
uh, staple pieces that we've had in the line for a long time. And what makes it different is it has the removable liner. Yeah. And I, I personally remove the liner um, because I like the open concept inside the glove with the liner out. It, I feel it provides plenty of warmth and it's not restrictive. I, I don't like the feeling of a tight glove. I like a, a more loose fit glove. One, one area I see a lot of uh, people use this glove is they don't have a lot of storage capacity, so they may not be packing six different pairs of gloves, but they'll pack different liners. So in the morning when it's cold, they'll have, we have a 2.0 and a 3.0 and a 1.0. They'll have a heavier liner in this. They'll wear it in. They'll get warm. They'll take the liner out, do, ride how like you do, because it's a thinner glove, more like one of these. Go through the day. If they get cold, they put the liner back in. So it's kind of a it is a one glove that can be used for multiple things and not have to pack a bunch of extra gloves. Yep. Yeah, the Togedi is awesome. Uh, we skipped over the Climate. The Climate is a glove, it's, it's funny, uh, Ross kind of brought this glove to my attention. He, he loves, uh, loved this glove when he was working for us. Um, it's a very lightweight glove. Um, it's Gore-Tex, obviously. And uh, tell us a little bit about it's that. It's got the synthetic palm. It's, we don't put leather on this glove because we want to keep the price affordable for any, about anybody. And we want it to be kind of an all around glove. Again, I say that a lot, but um, the biggest difference between this and say like a power cross is no leather. And then it's got insulation under the palm and on top of the mm -hmm. palm. So it, it's going to cover uh, if you're standing around on the snow a little bit and you don't have your hand warmers or for the people that use those, this is going to give the bottom of your palm a little bit more insulation where most of these gloves don't have any insulation on, on the, the palm. palm. So this is a good one to have in the pack for standing around a little bit. It's not super bulky, yeah, but it's going to keep you warm if you guys are eating lunch or whatever or fixing the sled. Definitely a lightweight uh, glove. Yeah. So I was telling you before, Keith Curtis actually races. On a cold day, he races in this glove. Yeah. Insulated glove. It's his, it's his go-to. Yeah. We're, we're letting you guys know some of Keith's secrets uh, with the climate glove here. Be so mad at us. All right, what do we what do we got here? So this is a new glove, uh, the Blaze glove. This is um, kind of inspired by the Guide glove. Mm -hmm. It's a full leather glove on the front of the palm. Um, it's eventually a cl it's essentially a climate, an insulated climate with a gauntlet and leather. So it's a fancier version of the climate essentially. So it's got. The insulation on the palm and also on the back of the hand, but a little bit of a softer feel with the leather. Cool. Uh, then it uh, looks like we've got some... Let's, let's talk about yeah. the claw. The claw. We've got the claw glove. Um, this is the crap we're spending the night glove. <laughs> yep. Um, a ton of insulation, you know, keeping those fingers together so they stay warm. Um, not as easy to ride in. You can ride in it. I have done it. You know, you got the single finger brake. Yep. Um, but this is that conditions are going to get really bad and I got to protect myself gloves. So this is what I keep. And I keep a pair of these in my Ziploc bag and I just keep them in the back and I hardly ever touch them. Yeah. Yep. But the one time you need them, you're going to be glad you had You'll them. You'll be glad you had them. So now we go to the women's glove and, and this is fairly simple because they're essentially the same as one of the gloves we have here in a men's just with a, a fitted and an aesthetic to the women. Um, so we've got the Versa glove. Let's see. Okay. We've got the Versa glove. This is the inversion, yep. uh, uh, windstopper glove. We've got the Ember glove, which is very similar to the climate mm -hmm. with the synthetic palm insulation on the back and the front. And then we have the bombshell glove, which is the short cuff, like the power cross insulation on the back of the hand. And then just the gore grip, uh, no insulation on the palm, but it's got the leather palm. So that, that's, that's a lot. And we actually didn't even cover them all. Like there's other gloves that we didn't talk about in this line, but these are kind of the staple pieces that we find most people use. Yep. Um, the one thing I will talk about is mate, taking care of your gloves is going to make a big difference on how long they last and how long they stay waterproof. So talk about that. So every glove will have care instructions and pay really close attention to those care instructions. They're not exactly all the same, but if you wash them or you don't wash them or exactly how you take care of them, because if you get them really dirty, that clogs the Gore-Tex pores mm -hmm. and that's part of how they work. So making gloves last, half of that is obviously taking care of the gloves. Cool. That's good to know. Well, a uh, lot, lot of information to digest here. Uh, and again, Lots of options to ensure that you get the right piece of equipment for the use demands that you have. And I think, uh, you know, 
taking all of this information, what I take out of it is you don't have to have 20 pairs of gloves, but what Climb is doing, especially with the advancements uh, with like Gore-Tex and Gore-Grip and heated and all that stuff, you're being able to carry a lot less. There's the, the gloves are becoming more versatile and that's awesome for us as consumers and riders.